oddly enough, oddly enough, world shocking news has just come across my flipping desk, right? As I've been recording this podcast and I've been doing my thing, thinking about things and just, you know, opening my third eye. Guess what's happened? The most tragic news, the most tragic news has happened. Lizzo, unfortunately, has quit music. According to an Instagram post that she put out just a few minutes ago, Lizzo has quit music. Now, take this with a pinch of salt, right? Because musicians do this all the time. Whenever they're in a bit of a strop, they quit. They want, like, I can't remember the amount of times that, you know, Lil Uzi Vert has threatened to quit music. But considering Lizzo's been fairly quiet the last 18 months in terms of music, in terms of being, you know, public and shit this probably makes a lot of sense and maybe there is some truth to it so let's actually read the caption itself what she posted on the old instagram regarding her quitting music so the caption on instagram says as follows i'm getting tired of putting up with being dragged by everyone in my life on the internet all i want is to make music and make people happy and help the world be a little bit better than how i found it but i'm starting to feel like the world doesn't want me in it I'm constantly up against the, I'm I'm, I'm sorry, I'm constantly up against lies being told about me for clout and views, being the butt of the joke every night, every single time because of how I look, my character being picked apart by people who don't know me and disrespecting my name. I didn't sign up for this. I quit. Peace sign, obviously, with the black skin emoji, clearly in it. She's definitely somebody that would fucking you know, manually change the fucking skin tone. Of emo- By the way, if you're a person who fucking changes the skin tone of your emojis on your fucking keyboard, you are a weirdo. You have issues. You have problems. To 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 assign some level of personalization to a fucking emoji, things that don't actually exist in the real world to represent you is dumb. Especially because a lot of people tend to, I've noticed, they tend to put their emoji skin tone a little bit lighter than what they actually look like in real life. So if you're going to do the whole skin tone thing, at least make it, you know, closer to what you actually look like. Don't fucking start, you know, bleaching your skin on a fucking emoji skin tone. It's fucking bizarre. Anyway, going back to the statement, I'm not going to lie. It is quite sad that this is happening. Unlike some people out there, I'm a big fan of Lizzo's music. I quite like her. I think she's very talented. I think she's a brilliant performer. Um, I think she's got an incredible range. I think she has a really good, really high ceiling when it comes to what she can do, her potential. Obviously, the range is incredible. She can make anything from country to R&B to pop records to disco. Like, she's incredible. But the funny thing is, when I was thinking about her posting this quit statement about music, was you know what I was thinking? I swear one of her most popular tracks in the last few years is titled About That Ti- About Damn Time. It's, it's a sick song, right? It's, it's a very, it's a kind of boogie funk record. Something that you could imagine like Stevie Wonder jumping on a fucking remix and fucking making it go crazy. So she's got a track called About Damn Time. That's one of her best tracks. And she's quitting music. And there's a bunch of people I've seen online reacting to it who are saying about that, about damn time, right? There's somebody actually used this meme here on the side of Jeremy Clarkson, where he goes, oh no. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> you know, people are kind of rejoicing the fact that she's quitting. But I'm quite surprised, I'm not going to lie, just off the back of, I feel like Lizzo did amazingly well to overcome counterculture. When those former dancers came for her and attacked her and basically said that she was a horrible leader, she was abusing them, harassing them, pushing them too hard, making them want to drink too much, making them want to do drugs, making them turn up, making them grind on people. Like she sounded like a a bit of a tyrant, but also a bit of a horn dog, which makes sense considering, you know, she's always outside, you know, showing her tits and bending over and making it fucking shake and shit, right? She's clearly a bit of a freaky, you know, um out there kind of girl. But I thought she did incredibly well to come back from that. The fact that she was also alleged to be a bit of a bully who ironically fat shamed some people in her fucking dance group and shit. I thought she did really well to come back from that cancellation. And you know what? She did amazingly well. She just pretended like it didn't happen. She just steamrolled through it. She just kept turning up to events. She kept going to concerts. I, f- I forgot who was performing. Maybe it might, it might have been a Beyonce, um, what you call it, tour. She went to a couple of Beyonce tours. She stepped out. She was dancing. She honestly acted like nothing ever happened and i honestly think that's the best way to deal with those type of like soft cancellations obviously if you've been accused of like grape and assault and all those type of things you can't just step out and and pretend like nothing's happening and start like you know harlem shaking and shit but if you've got one of those cancellations where it's like somebody just saying oh you're a horrible person or you called them names or whatever you can kind of 
you know, make that shit go away if you just step out and act like nothing happened. And I think Lizzo did a good job of that. So in my opinion, doing all that good work to step out, pretend like cancellation doesn't work, only to then quit music makes no sense. So I have a feeling this has more to do with some stuff happening behind the scenes than some stuff that we've seen in front of camera. Something else is maybe happening that's kind of affecting her ability to enjoy music and put it together. But here's another theory of mine. Reading this whole blurb, it's also making me think maybe this is all a play to get some attention. Maybe she's feeling like people have forgotten about her. She feels like she's not included in, a, in the public discourse, conversation, in culture. No one's really been paying her any mind for positives or for negatives. And she trotted out a lot of the things that people say about her online in this statement, right? People talking about what she looks like, people criticizing her music. For, like She's kind of saying things in the hopes of goading people into saying things about her. So it kind of feels like this is a bit of a stunt. You know, so either something's happened behind the scenes that we're not aware of, or this is just a stunt to get attention and to kind of put a to put the limelight back on her, get people talking about her again. Because before today, I hadn't heard a single person mention Lizzo, and I hadn't thought about her ever since she got you know exposed for being a bit of a shitty leader, shitty boss, shitty friend, whatever it may be, and maybe not the ally of the body positive positivity body positivity movement as I thought, which was funny because I remember reading a couple of tweets online. And loads of girls or people who had abbies that looked like girls were basically saying that they weren't surprised that Lizzo came across like a bit of a mean girl because essentially a lot of the girls were saying that the meanest girls within mean girl crews or within crews of girls are usually the fat ones and they're usually the meanest to each other. So other, other fat girls are usually more mean to other fat girls than skinny girls are to, me, are to fat girls, which I was like, huh, that makes a lot of sense. So even though Lizzo was purporting to be like body positivity person, which I thought was sick to be fair. I'm not going to lie. I actually did enjoy the fact that she went out of her way. I forgot what the show was called. I think it was on Amazon. She went out of her way to basically hold these open auditions where she was basically trying to, you know, um, rewrite this or sort of like, you know, change the sort of perception of what it means to be like a backup dancer and not just have it be like, you know, super skinny, super hot looking people like you see at most tours, especially at Beyonce's one, right? Where the backup dancers all had, you know, their own groupies and shit. She wanted there to be like a lot of representation um, in terms of people, what people look like and obviously their size and shit. And I thought it was quite refreshing to see that, to see girls on stage that all went twinks, right? They kind of all came in all shapes and sizes. But unfortunately, from what we saw in the allegations from some of those backup dancers, you know, it, it wasn't all sunshine and rainbows. It was pretty difficult to kind of make that work. Now, do I believe everything that was coming out of those girls' state, out of those girls' mouths? Probably not. But the truth of the matter is, unfortunately for Lizzo, similar to like an Ellen DeGeneres, a lot of Lizzo's brand, apart from the fatness, was based on her being really nice. It was, it was based on her being really warm, really kind, really sweet. So when the story comes out that you're a bit of a meanie, that probably does way more damage to your reputation than the whole like fat shaming thing. The fat shaming thing is kind of whatever. Obviously, it's not nice, but... I think the real damage to her reputation was people finding out that she wasn't a nice person behind the scenes. Same way like Ellen DeGeneres kind of got killed because of that. Because, you know, she purported to be like this happy, smiley person. But then behind the scenes, she's a bit of a tyrant. And obviously, you know, rules a bit of an iron fist. And people are not really the, you know, don't really enjoy working with her and stuff. So that sort of stuff obviously isn't the greatest. Now, in my opinion, just to kind of end this, my current feeling would be because artists and musicians are starved of attention and they're all narcissists and attention whores and clout hungry, I have a feeling that this statement was an attempt to get people to pay attention to her again. I don't think she has any intention of quitting music. I don't think there's anything else that she could do apart from doing music anyway. Like I said, apart from all her antics and how annoying she could be online, there's no there's no denying that Lizzo is a musically very, very talented, very, very gifted. She probably has more talent in her pinky toe than a lot of mainstream artists out there. It's just in it's just unfortunate that the overall package isn't great, right? She just isn't, you know, she just hasn't got it, which is probably why she's in the situation she's in now. She's quite, she's kind of like, she's kind of like a fat Normani, if that makes sense. If you know who Normani is, you know what I mean. Lizzo's kind of like a fat Normani. She has all the potential to be a star, but just hasn't got it 
you know, hasn't got it, hasn't figured out the whole package thing. So I think this is just a cry for attention. I don't think she has any intention of actually quitting. And I think most likely we'll see her drop something next week. <laughs> That's what I think is going to happen. We'll see her drop a new single next week and it will be forgotten. But, you know, it's a shame that the last song that I remember from her that kind of springs to mind is about damn time. And a bunch of people online are celebrating and saying it's about that time. It's about damn time, sorry, that Lizzo quits. But I don't want her to quit. I want her to stay and make loads of good music. Because like I said, I think she's super, super, super talented. And I want to see more from her going forward. Forward. 